Okay, that took a really long time. I thought it was going to take like an hour. No, that took like seven hours or something. <laughs> it took a really long time. Cursed the uh, single-threaded nature of Python. Uh, coming over here, um, just in case, uh, at least so I forgot already anyway. So for everybody watching this video, it was probably back-to-back, -back, so I guess you guys are not forgetting. But... Starting funds, we said, was 100,000. Wager size is 100. So we're trading with basically a 1,000th of our total um, purse size. So that's pretty small. But again, like I said, I believe the, um, the best amount to trade with would be like one over like 1.6, like one 1.6 millionth. So you'd want to like show up to the casino casino with 1.6 million and be prepared to play i don't know like a million a million wagers so this certainly is not a get rich quick scheme by any by any means but it is profitable and at least you can kind of have fun gambling with fairly good chances or fairly good odds um if you're wagering a small enough um, portion of your entire fund so anyways we had a hundred thousand wager size <clears throat> of a hundred and the thing that took the absolute longest is we allowed for up to 100,000 wagers. Um, so before we were allowing for 100 wagers or 1,000 wagers. And the problem here is as you make more money, it becomes harder and harder to go broke. So long as you're making more money and you've won enough in a row to where your bet is at least somewhat low. So... You know, you might make a lot of money, but your current wager size might be, you know, you started at 100, but your wager size is 5,000, okay? Um, but once you work your way back down to a, you know, a wager size of somewhere in the hundreds again, um, you've kind of all locked in your profits, so to speak, after you've made so many wins in a row that you got back down to a wager size in the hundreds. So it would be wise to continue playing but we needed to set some limit on wager count otherwise over a long period of time I mean, we wouldn't either go broke or it would never stop <laughs> so we had to put a limit on wager count but I wanted it to be large enough to run through a lot of options so we set a hundred thousand <clears throat> scrolling down um, I'm trying to see how many did we set um, right so we let one million people uh, sample this. So we tried this across a sample size of a million different betters with different odds and all of that. And anyway, at the end of the day, we see that, ignore this, if you were from the last video, I believe this was just something we ran um, in the last video. So that's just here. Uh, I was expecting this to take a lot less time than it did. Otherwise, I would have gotten rid of that too. But anyway, this is our actual result uh, from those settings. So from allowing up to 100,000 wagers to take place, a million different bettors, and one one-thousandth of a bet size, we can see that even though that's the case, our bust rate is still pretty high. That's 97.58% um, people go bust. <laughs> <laughs> and only 2.4% of the people make a profit. Of those people that make a profit, this is how much profit we made. But as you can see, it's actually not that great of a uh, of a profit. So like uh, this is, gosh, I don't even know what this number is. But the difference is 865, let's see if I can't break this down. Right. The difference here is 865,000. <clears> and so this is 865,000. This is, or I'm sorry, this is, <laughs> this is 865 uh, million, and this is, let's see, we've got thousands, millions, so this is 100 billion, and this is 865 million, um, so we're approaching almost a 1% profit. Now, Again, though, this just kind of brings home the point that okay, we approached a literally a one percent <laughs> profit. Uh, that's definitely uh, not exciting at all. Most of the time, people go to gamble for you know some excitement. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys uh, these odds. When we wrap up, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about my thoughts on all these gambling strategies and stuff. <clears throat> But, um, moving back to our tutorial here, 
even though um, we found you know these numbers here, we did this strategy, and at the end of the day, we still we just kind of arbitrarily picked um, the wager size, starting funds, and wager count, <laughs> right? We just kind of randomly picked that stuff. And as I said in the beginning, the wager size and starting funds are going to be tied to each other because really what this boils down to is a percentage of your purse. So there's no reason to vary, like to make both of these a random variable. At least I don't, I don't foresee any reason. If you happen to think of why that would matter, uh, feel free to comment below. But as far as my logic and reasoning goes, uh, <clears throat> there's no point because we're really looking for a percentage size of your, your full trade amount. Plus the wager count that you would maybe want to go through with. Uh, so it might be wise to only play this strategy over 100 wagers and then restart again. Stuff like that. So, uh, what I want to do now is allow for some of these things to actually change and we want to make these kind of variable. So, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the Monte Carlo uh, simulator to simulate the outcome of just changing up these variables randomly, kind of like we did with the random multiplier. And so we're going to do that and see if we can come up with any other variables that are superior to the ones that we've been trading. And this will be kind of even though we did it once with a Monte Carlo generator, we actually, I mean, like, we got a result, and it was like 1.7, I think, was the, the best multiple, but that was only one variable, and so that's not as impressive as coming up with, say, two variables or three variables. So what I want to do is just kind of uh, show you guys how you might uh, at least do multiple variables, um, and then we'll even do maybe a third variable. And then finally, at the end of the day, all this is nice when you print out numbers, but everybody wants to look at a pretty chart. And so I'm going to show you guys at least uh, with two variables, and we'll probably do a three-dimensional charting as well of uh, what our Monte Carlo simulator shows us and, and gives us out of our data. So that'll be lots of fun. So anyways, uh, this video, no new coding, just the results here um, and what we plan to do in the next video. Uh, so anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.